So we have nice first order conditions, necessary conditions for determining whether uh, something is maxima or minima. And sufficient conditions normally for local max Sufficient conditions are generally in terms of are characterized by the behavior of the Hessian of f at a particular point. So that's great, but in general we want global maxes and global mins, absolute maxes, absolute mins. And so in general we'll have to apply an exhaustive search. unless f is convex or concave. So if we have a simplifying assumption on f, then it could be the case that we just have to verify that it's a local max, and then we automatically get that it's a global max. And that's exactly characterized by convexity of a function. And in order to introduce convexity of a function, we need to first define convexity of a set. So a set U subset of Rn is convex if for every pair X and Y in your set, and every t in 0, 1, t times x plus 1 minus t, y, exists in u. That is, for every pair of points in u, the line segment adjoining them also is in u, that entire line segment. And so examples, of course, are spheres and circles and balls but also nice convex polygons and polyhedra. Lots of different sets are like that, and they can be pretty exotic, but not, not too crazy, of course. Now, a function is convex on a convex set u if for all x, y in u and t in 0, 1, we have that f of tx plus 1 minus ty is less than or equal to tf x plus 1 minus t f of y. And you can verify that, for example, x squared satisfies this situation. Because if we take this point over here and this point over here, then this value is just the convex combination of those values. And so it'll look like this. And in particular, if I evaluate the function at any point in between x and y here, I get a value that's less than or equal to this thing. Then there's the opposite notion of concavity. So a function is concave on a convex set U if instead we uh, reverse the inequality. So we've got tf x plus 
1 minus t f of y is less than or equal to f of tx plus 1 minus t y. So that's just the opposite notion. And of course, if I have convexity on a set, then it looks like I should be able to say that I have a global, or it should be easy to find a global minimum. And if I have concavity, which is the opposite picture, then I should have a global maximum, right? And how do we remember this? Because I, I constantly forget which one is convex and which is concave. Well, uh, so how to remember at least the, the names, right? It's concave. So the first thing is that you remember that x squared is convex and minus x squared is concave. So you have concave. So you can keep that picture in your head. Uh, well, concave looks like a cave. If you're staring from, if you're looking from y is equal to negative infinity, right? So if I'm, if I'm down here somewhere and I look, then concave will look like a cave, and convex is going to look like a convex lens, or the opposite of concave. So that's maybe a helpful device for remembering it. And uh, once, once you have the picture, the inequality should be pretty clear. Now we can relate concavity and convexity to the Hessian. So let f from u into r be c2 uh, with domain u a convex set, right? And of course we need convexity to even ask if this inequality works because if if these points don't exist then we can't really talk about anything that's why we needed to define convexity well we have uh, three basic facts so the following are equivalent the first thing is that F is concave on you. Second thing, Fy minus Fx is less than or equal to the Jacobian of F at X applied to Y minus x, right? And of course the Jacobian here is just the gradient. We could just write the gradient here dotted with this thing. Uh, for all uh, x and y in u, of course. And the third thing is that d squared f of x is negative semi-definite for all x in u. So that's that's really awesome because this tells us exactly when we're going to have a, a maximum point. So if we can if we can tease out any of these facts, then we're in good shape. B, also the following are equivalent. So now we also have convexity. Right, so F convex is equivalent to F of Y minus F of X. Now I reverse the inequality, gradient F, X dotted with y minus x. And of course the third thing is that the Jacobian f 
of x is positive semi-definite. for all x and u. Those are equivalent. And it's basically the same idea. Part C. Now we see that concavity and convexity characterize, well, allow us to figure out if there's a global min or max. So if f is concave, respectively convex on u, and the gradient of f at x star is equal to zero for some x star and u, then x star is a global max. For the and a min in the convex case of f on u. And that's that's the entire power of concavity and convexity, is that it just gives you global, it, it turns global maxes into global mins.